I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Latin America adjacent Belize just here for a couple days but I'm gonna take you guys for a walk down this way I'm gonna spin the camera around because you don't want to see me when we're looking at Belize you want to see what the waterfront looks like out here on the Caribbean the Sun is getting low you can see we got a sunset going on here through the palm trees it is my one full day here in Belize tomorrow I gotta head back and it takes an entire day 17 hours of flying to get back even though it's only right around the corner uh, so Tomorrow's gonna be another travel day. Yesterday was a travel day, but today is my day in Belize. I'm gonna tell you about that and show you a bunch of this when we get back from the bump. So this is the neighborhood of Buttonwood Bay in Northern Belize City. This is where I'm staying. My hotel is, I believe that one right there. I could be wrong. If, oh, that no, that is definitely it. So that is where I'm staying. And we're just gonna head kind of towards downtown if such a thing exists. We're heading east. Does that help? If you're looking at a map, Smokies on the water is just behind me and I apologize for the wind. Not much I can help with that. I'm gonna show some beautiful houses. Look at that, look at that yard. Considering waterfront uh, yards, yards, Considering waterfront lots are often over a million, you can take a guess at how much these houses would cost. Oh, this one, holy cow. That is a beautiful building right there. When we look out to the water, you can see some of the islands. Those are the keys. All over the place here. And yes, this is the Caribbean Sea lapping right there. That is not some offshoot, not some lake. That's the actual Caribbean. How you doing? I do find that being in this region and speaking English is very non-intuitive at this point. A lot of houses, especially out here, are built on stilts because hurricanes hit this region hard on a very regular basis. So my day today, got up early this morning, about 6.30, really didn't get a lot of sleep, and uh, went to breakfast, I'm, I'm staying at a B&B, so breakfast was included. So about seven o'clock, I headed down, got breakfast, came down, did a little walk down here in the water, tiny, tiny walk, uh, and then went back, was waiting for my ride, because we had a big meeting in Belmopan, which is the capital. It's about an hour away drive from here. So I had to, colors ice cream, interesting. Had to, had to get out there. So while I was waiting for my ride, I uh, took the time to record an episode, do a little bit of charging of all my devices, get all ready to go. And then we drove out to Belmopan. That was quite interesting. So the capital was moved out of Belize City to get it away from the hurricanes. That way the government buildings don't get washed away every time a hurricane comes. Belmopan is the only other city in the country. There's Belize City, by far the biggest, somewhere between 100 and 200,000 people. Belize as a country is only about 450,000. And then Belmopan, an hour west, has about another 30,000. So while that's tiny, it is... It is the only other thing that qualifies as a city in the country. There's villages, but here's Buttonwood Bay Park. It's 
It's a nice walkway along the along the waterfront here. I don't know what that is we're walking towards, but it looks really nice. This is the first I'm seeing any of this. I've not had any time to do touristy things, so I'm just out getting some exercise. And when I'm done with this, gonna be getting dinner. But so we had a really good meeting in Belmopan. Really interesting. Oh gosh, crocodile warning. Was not expecting that. I guess that makes sense. All right, haven't seen any crocodiles yet. If you want to see me scream and run away like a little girl, that would be that would be the way. Unless it, it was like an adventurous little girl who would go up and play with the crocodiles, then that would not be like that. Oh, some nice places here. Suddenly I'm worried about taking my eyes off of the waterfront, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't often walk places with crocodile warnings. Just as a general rule, I like to avoid crocodiles. So we had this good meeting. It was very interesting. Got to do a lot of business in a style that I don't normally do. So it was, it was just a, a it was a cool day. We'll say it was a cool day. From our morning meeting, just went to uh, I think it's called Feathers and Wings which it was not a wings place, which you would think given that name, but it was a really nice little eclectic restaurant in Belmopan, had a sandwich there. And then we headed out to the Roaring River Country Club uh, and had a meeting out there this afternoon that is east, I think, of Belmopan, heading out towards Guatemala. So from Belize City, so let's just be clear, this is the Caribbean water out here. So this is the westernmost point of the country. We got kind of a boulevard over there. And something big here. Apparently we are leaving Buttonwood and going into the city proper. And... Uh, from here in this western point... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In the eastern point... I'm all confused. Oh, here's the thing. Punta Gorda, 105 miles. San Ignacio, 62. Orange Walk, 45. All right. Got a cute little park here. And uh, to go to Guatemala, the main crossing is only two hours. It looks like, from what I can tell on the map, it's just under two hours from Belize City to cross the entire country of Belize and enter Guatemala. That's pretty cool. All right, with this little park, it's a cool Belize sign, and these lucky turtles, uh, which you are required to touch both for good luck, so we're going to come over and do this. Make sure you do this when you're in Belize. And we've now run out of sidewalk. So, the adventure continues. This apparently is a Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. Not 100% sure what that means, but interesting. All right, now we're just walking down the road. This is a beautiful house. Check this out. Okay, this empty lot here is for rent. Can only imagine how much it costs to rent an empty lot. I'm glad we managed to get out and do at least a little walk today. It was such a busy day that very hard to get any time for the show. But, oh, we got a little marina here. Oh, there we go. But I'm not here for filming. 
This is a work trip, so I just gotta squeeze in what I can. But the upside is I didn't have to pay for this trip, so. So uh, can't really complain. Free trip to Belize, definitely a win. And the meetings went really well today. And so uh, we're already in the process of scheduling another trip back, but the next one shouldn't be an emergency. So the hope is that the next time, and they've already said that I gotta come down and spend a few days and put in some real time to do like sightseeing, go out and see the keys and that kind of stuff. So hopefully, Sometime in the next two months, that's my guess. Ooh, check out this place. All right, Science of the Soul Study Center. Not sure what that is. Then we've got this, something huge here. Can't really see it, but definitely something big and impressive. Ooh, honorary, oh, 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 it's the consulate of India. No wonder it's all cool and impressive. A waterfront consulate. That's a way to go. Is this one a house? Who knows? Definitely a cool area. All right. We're still on the north side of Belize City. We haven't turned or anything. All of this is new for me too, so. Oh, got some high rises down there. This boulevard looks like it has a future of being an amazing boulevard with big trees, but they haven't planted the trees yet. That's my, that's my guess. Now, when I was in the taxi, uh, my taxi driver, this is yesterday, my taxi driver said his girlfriend is from Bluefields, Nicaragua. And he said when he goes back there to visit, that being in Bluefields feels exactly like Belize, which is not too surprising because it's all part of the Mosquito Coast. Oh, we got some wind. A lot of wind. So all being part of the same Atlantic coast, not too surprising that he felt that they were very similar. But I've not been out there to see just how, how true that is. Ooh, look at this place. Something big being built over here. And I do believe I've kind of found the end of things. This road seems to have nowhere to go. Or is this a road? Can I go down this? We, we, we might be able, it looks like we can go this way. All right. I really don't know where I'm going, so, and I'm running out of light. I really just wanna walk the city and show you guys as much as I possibly can before the light is gone or my battery dies. Okay, from what I can tell, there's quite a bit of city still to walk along, but there's no, there's no roads going through or anything. We're in an area known as West Landivar. So one thing I've noticed, the cell service out here is far from strong. So being able to load a map or anything while you're walking around, a little bit challenging.
So one thing that's interesting here in Belize is that you have a ton of areas that are still open. The population is so low that you have wide open spaces everywhere. Look at this, right? Obviously that's the waterfront right there. But the moment you're off the waterfront, you have so much lack of development. But Belize has become such a hotbed of expatting that foreign investment has made the property values just insane. So locals are almost entirely unable to own here. It's completely unaffordable. But there's also loads and loads of open spaces that everyone's just waiting to get super high prices on. And so when you walk around, everything looks undeveloped and, and poor, but actually buying a lot is completely, completely impossible. Like these lots are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Empty, empty, right? And then a you know, house like that one in the millions. But to have a place in the millions and then have it be on empty dirt roads and undeveloped spots and maps that don't load is a weird combination of things. So Belize is going through a bit of a struggle, it seems, to figure out how to deal with skyrocketing foreign investment while the country's looking at having to find a way to be sustainable. Right, because you need, you know, just like Costa Rica, you have to have spots for people to live where Costa Ricans can live and can work in the places that they need to work and can have good lives. Because the entire purpose of the country is to provide good lives for Belizeans. And foreign investment does an awful lot to bring in money and resources and all kinds of things. But if everything becomes focused on the foreign investment, then it will destroy the country for the locals. If the locals can't afford to live here and can't afford to buy, it will in turn destroy what the foreign investors are here to get. And it'll all fall apart. So it's a very important process of balance. Look at this dog up in the wall. It's a very important balance to maintain to make sure that you're able to make it something that, yeah, show. Again, lots of empty lots, right? Missing roads, unable to get through places tiny population, but it's all super expensive. Why is it super expensive when everything's empty and undeveloped? Right? It doesn't exactly make sense. So who's spending money here? It seems like a crazy investment. It feels like the market has to collapse because yeah, some of these places are going to be super desirable for a long time, but with so many empty lots, why would someone spend so much money? Like what's the draw? It's unclear. Now some of these places are just amazing, but amazing, gorgeous house right there. Empty lot right there. Cute pink house there. But like things don't match up. It's all very incongruent. It feels, I have to say, overall a bit poorer than Nicaragua. I know that salaries are higher, but not a lot higher. Same ballpark, but but the cost of living is super high. Now remember, this is Belize City, so this would be comparable to Managua, but also San Juan del Sur because it's the main beach zone and the main city. So quite a bit different than, than anything you would experience in Nicaragua. All right, we found that boulevard. Found some cute houses just off the boulevard. So I found out that tomorrow uh, I have to leave for Guatemala City about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to be there 
all day because I don't fly, I don't get to Nicaragua until after 11 o'clock at night. So I have a very long day in Guatemala, uh, but I have luggage. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with a long day in Guatemala, but this is one of the great things about Aurora Airport. It's downtown, so you can get out of the airport and walk to things, you can take an Uber places really quickly. So I need to figure out where I would wanna go in Guatemala City with luggage but I have quite a bit of a day to spend there. So if I can figure it out, could be interesting. If I can't figure it out, it's gonna be really boring. At some kind of tall hotel in front of us. I can read the word hotel, but I can't read the name on it. Got something cool over here on the left. We're definitely in the sunset light. I don't have a lot of sun left. Here, I'm just gonna show how, how set the sun is. So we got a little bit of time left, but we're getting low. Ah, it's a security company on the left. Okay, so this is Creole and American cuisine at this pink house restaurant there on the right. That's different. I've noticed there's not a ton of restaurants here. I mean, certainly there's restaurants, but like walking along the waterfront, there isn't the large number of nice places that you'd want to go to along the water the way that you would expect. Oh, hey, look, there's a sidewalk that I can't get to from anywhere. What is the point of that sidewalk? Seriously. You would expect Sarah Palin to build this sidewalk to nowhere. Clay pots pool table, items and supplies. What, what kind of weirdness is that? Home protector insurance park. Oh my gosh, that's weird. Ooh, there's a nice house beyond the playground. Hopefully I'm walking towards something that makes sense. This boulevard is very strange.
McNabb Visual Strategies and Institute of Neuroscience. Uh, Okie dokie. And an old falling down house it looks like. The Lucky 7 Inn. Ooh, I don't think you'd be very lucky if that's where you were staying. Ouch. Some cool houses. I think this would be a cooler neighborhood if it had sidewalks. This kind of has a feel not unlike South Alabama. There's something here called the hookup. I think it's on the second floor. That was mostly so you can find us on a map. Oh, the police are driving by. The police stopped. That's always worrisome. Yeah, they totally stopped. Yeah, they're just sitting down there. They're watching me. That's something I don't get in Nicaragua. The police don't take an interest in me filming. They'll smile and wave. Never once had them actually stop like that to see where I'm going. We got a puppy over here. Hey, no. The Magic Boutique. Uh-huh. What do we think they have there? Probably not magic supplies. All right. A lot of houses out here. Did I say this already? Built on stilts, uh, or everything majors on the second floor, because hurricanes are really common. So flooding, non-stop problem out here. So a lot of normal houses are built, raised up all over. We saw a lot of that actually out in Belbapan, and I asked about it, and they're like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. There's no way for a hurricane to get out here. But here in Belize City, this goes underwater regularly. Oh, here you go. Empty lot available, destroyed building probably available. Apparently Pizza Express is down this road. I think I'll pass. Nice looking building on the corner here. Oh yeah, look at this, very cute.
another house on stilts. Plus when you build a house on stilts, you get more breeze in the part that you live in. The style of construction definitely immediately makes it a very different feel than Nicaragua, which of course we're also on the Caribbean, we're farther north, it's completely different cultural background. So you expect it to be completely different, but the construction really makes it so different so quickly. That blue building is interesting. One thing I noticed here in Belize is that Super 7 and Puma, the same gas station chains that we have in Nicaragua are the ones that they have here. And I'm going to take a quick break here for both the camera and me to cool off for a minute and uh, check the maps, figure out where we want to go from here and uh, continue exploring it for at least a little bit. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I've cooled down for a minute. Here's the boulevard that I just walked down. I'm on the other side of the street because I'm going to be heading back now back heading towards Buttonwood again. I, limited time to walk around the city and I've gone through about half the battery and most of the light so probably best to head back and uh at least get this uploading for you I hope this has been a useful walk. I mean, we got a bit more to go I'm not ending I just I'm hoping this is a good walk for you guys to get a feel of what uh Belize is like this is the only big city in the country so unfortunately I can't show the countryside so this is important though, if you're, if you're thinking about Belize, a vacation, a expatting, whatever, uh, Belize is generally thought of as a very rural countryside destination or probably even more so an island destination as it is full of keys that are very popular and San Pedro and all those places are out on the islands uh, up closer to Mexico, not far from here, but in the direction of Mexico. And so, oh, check out the, everything is an insurance building here. I've noticed that insurance seems to be a very dominant industry. Feels weird, but there's a lot about the Belizean economy, I don't know. And uh, so this has been our tour of a very small section of Belize city. But I think relatively indicative of what the style of the city looks like and all that but most people when they're thinking about Belize are thinking about rural areas open countryside loads and loads of Caribbean waterfront and islands and things like that which are in abundance and very very cool here uh, but the city is also important because if you live here this is where all of your activity is. This is the only city, so all of your resources, your banks, your ATMs, your insurance companies, your restaurants, your nightlife, all those things are based here. Is way more so than Managua with Nicaragua, because at least it has outlying cities that have a lot of the resources. But there's only this one city and the 30,000 people of Belmopan. And while that's a cute city, it doesn't have much of anything. So, it's important to understand Belize City because one way or another, you'll be using it if you live here or visit here. This is the V department store. Oh yeah, interesting.
it is a very interesting country. And I'm really excited about coming back and spending several days and getting to really dig in, try a bunch of food, go to a bunch of places, have free time for filming, not be rushing to do it in an evening. Mama Mia's Pizza a Pizza sounds really good right now, honestly. They asked me when I wanted to do dinner and I'm all like, I'm not hungry. I'm, I'm kind of starving, I realize. This is Beauty Bloom. Mm, probably not a great name for it. Prestige Auto Sales. Ah, for those who are wondering, the Belizean dollar is two Belizean dollars for every American dollar. It is a locked system, but it's very hard to get Belize dollars on the open market. So you can't buy them reasonably outside of Belize. If you do, the rate you get will be, not be anywhere near that because on the open market, they're not worth that in any way whatsoever. But here, it's a guaranteed exchange and is exactly two to one. However, you essentially can't go the other direction. So it is not like Nicaragua. If you watch my channel, you may be saying, ah, this is the Hotel Golden Tree. That's what we've been seeing. So if you've been watching my videos, you may have seen one of many explaining how currency exchange work in Nicaragua, where we have 37 to one, the government controls it. It sounds an awful lot like Belize, but you would be mistaken, and that would be a dangerous mistake to make. Here, it is not a dual currency country, it is a single currency country. The Belizean dollar is the only official currency. You can use US dollars if you have them to buy Belizean dollars. You cannot easily turn Belizean dollars into regular dollars, into US dollars, regular dollars. You can, under certain circumstances, to a limited amount, get access to US dollars. ATMs here do not dispense dual currency. You can't spend US dollars too much. Even the locals even have limits on their credit cards as to how much they can spend in US currency. Everything needs to be done in Belizean currency. The idea is that people turn US dollars into Belizean dollars and they stay that way. So it is a way of supplying the government with US dollars which makes sense, but it makes the Belizean dollar all but worthless on the open market because no one wants them. You can only spend them in Belize. The Body 2000 building. So Belizeans are always looking for ways to get American dollars, but if they get too many of them, they're not even allowed to deposit them in the bank. So while they always want them, they have to be really careful and they're very limited on how they can use them. So it's a really complicated problem for them because their local currency doesn't have very much value. So even a Belizean who may earn millions of dollars in Belizean, let's say they have 20 million Belizean dollars. That's 10 million American dollars. Well, that's a lot of money. You can do a lot with that, but they're essentially locked to spending it in the country because they can't move it outside of the country. If they do, it could easily disappear to $5 million if they're even allowed to transfer it. And so suddenly you're losing a lot of your spending money simply by the transfer. And that's before there's any taxes. That's purely trying to get it outside the country. So if you become wealthy in Belize, you are essentially stuck being wealthy in Belize, which if this is where you want to be, excellent, no problem. But if you want to be able to take your wealth and spend it abroad, even just partially, you may not be anywhere near as wealthy as you feel like you are. So it's, a, it's an interesting problem. Whereas in Nicaragua, you can get an unlimited amount of American money inside the country, and you can do an unlimited transfer 
to and from the Cordoba, both inside and outside the country. And while the exchange rate may vary a little, it's by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe 0.3 percent, not, not even, you know, two or three percent, let alone maybe 50 percent. So very, very different thing. Another kind of swampy, empty lot in the little city. A lot of like factory, old factory, rundown buildings. I'm getting a good walk this evening. Not as good as my walk in Guatemala City with my luggage the other day. I'm really surprised that this is my first trip to Belize. I've been working here for two years. First time actually being here. Some kind of cool buildings over there. So one thing to be aware of, if you're gonna drive around Belize, this is a country of speed bumps. And I know we see speed bumps other places. You see them in Nicaragua, they are nothing like Belize. We drove across the country today and they are everywhere and often invisible. And that guy just hit the, the bump as he went across. Like that car just hit the bump. Now he didn't bottom out. His air dam actually hit it. That's how tall these bumps are. They're everywhere. It is so awful driving around this country. And from what we witnessed today, only a few of the big roads are, are paved. Here in the city, obviously it's paved. Although you're seeing dirt all over. Even in the city, there's some dirt roads. But you get out to the country, even in the capital. We were just outside the capital and we had to drive down horrible condition dirt roads. There's very rarely a time that you can get up to any speed here whatsoever. Rude Boy is apparently, we see these ads everywhere, the local like uh, alcoholic drink. It's like fruit flavored, I think. I have not had a chance to, I've not seen anyone selling it. I think they sell it in like the gas stations or something. Bible Baptist Church. If I manage to find one this evening, I will get one and report on how it is. But as of yet, I have not had an experience of seeing one in a store, but the the advertisements for them are quite frequent. I get the impression it's new and probably a little bit like, I'm very much hypothesizing, bamboo from Guatemala or fusion from Honduras. All right, this sign makes me feel like we're back in the Buttonwood area. Ooh, got a fruit stand here. So I was told, I've not seen it, but I wouldn't necessarily notice it right away. It is interesting. Is, so this is the primary school here. I have COVID guidelines. Probably time to paint that over. Ooh, a Taiwanese restaurant. What? Oh my gosh. My kids would be so excited. Taiwanese cuisine, bubble tea, coffee three of their favorite things, the Milky Way. Cool, okay, I'm gonna stop for a second because I have to take a picture of this and send it to my kids. All right, picture sent. Very nice looking place. <laughs> Everyone waves to me from everywhere. So it's interesting that, oh, this is for sale apparently. Not like you would have guessed from the condition. Uh, so Belize, one, yes, they speak English in case that wasn't obvious. 
two, and they only speak English, like not like oh, a lot of people speak English. No, English is the language here. Uh, there are puppies, puppies. And, all right, we're gonna cross this boulevard before I get run over. We're heading down, that's the water down there. We showed this boulevard from the other end not long ago. And Belize is part of the Commonwealth. So this is part of the, the English crown. So they get a lot of resources, a lot of connections to England and the UK. So that creates an interesting situation where this is clearly Caribbean and Central American and one vibe, but like Jamaica, it has very, very strong political, legal, and structural ties to the UK. So that's weird. But because it is such a tiny country and such a tiny economy, such a tiny population, and so close to the enormous regional powerhouse of Guatemala, it is heavily supplied by Guatemala for nearly everything that they do. So all kinds of things here are Guatemalan because it's very close. It's also quite close to Honduras, but, but touching at a corner rather than sharing a majority border and a small border with Mexico, but that border is kind of in, a, in an empty-ish area of Mexico. So not nearly as influential because it's hard to move products and goods through that area. So nearly everything here comes by way of, of Guatemala, but of course, the traditional population, yeah, kind of, I like this house, this stone on the first floor. That's nice, I like their balcony. But then like, what the heck is this, right? It's kind of all over the place. And then we have this people, investments and technology, currency thing over here. Could be neat, I have no idea. Uh, but the indigenous population here is Mayan, like Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. So it's an interesting juxtaposition that you're in a Mayan country, but everyone speaks English. But there is very strong ties to the Yucatan, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, because it at one time was all a single group of people, single cultural zone, single history. And the English speaking and the ties to the UK are all extremely recent things that divide it from the rest of the region. So because Belize is so different than all the countries around it, from that recent history, it really makes it interesting what the region could be like if it was British throughout the region instead of Spanish. You get a little taste of that here and where its alliances lie and what the culture is like. And politically it is so different than all of its surrounding countries. Oh, we got a puppy running here. Hello puppy. Hi, is that your little? Your stuffed animal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, another dog. Three dogs. All kinds of dogs. Hi. Hi. I drive all the dogs crazy. And we are back to the Welcome to Belize sign. I'll be back in my hotel in no time. Seashore Promenade. All right, the sun is low. This is really perfect timing. Wind has died down, that's not so bad. Now you can see the walk that I did in the views, but in the opposite direction. I know it's gonna be a little bit dark, so it's not as good, but it's what we've got to work with. I don't have an option to get out and get bright sunshine or anything, so. This is what we have to work with today. It's not too bad. It's not super dark yet. And the battery is getting low. 
it's time for me to get ready for dinner. This has been a nice walk and it's been a nice trip. I wish I didn't have to spend literally as much time traveling to and from as being here. It would be nice to have a little bit of time here to hang out, but hopefully, hopefully coming back and soon. We've got a lot of travel I've got to do yet in the upcoming, upcoming near future. And an awful lot of people have been asking me to go out and check out Bluefields and Billwee. So I'm going to see what I can do, but I really can't go until I have a driver's license again. That is too far. I just, I gotta, gotta get that addressed. And if I do that trip, it'll take a bunch of time. So I'd end up doing it instead of going to Houston and getting my license. So I've got to prioritize that. But being out here does encourage me to go check out Nicaragua's Caribbean coast for sure. Hey! <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> but I want to go check out those areas now and do a comparison. I really want to see how much, I mean, obviously there's no city, right? There's nothing like a Belize city out there on that coast, but uh, comparing the more rural areas to Belize would be very cool. Oh, there's people in the park now. This was empty when we came by before, but now there's like people in the stands and people playing basketball. Hopefully you can see it pretty well. Another speed bump. That's a lot of people watching a game in the park. I would not have expected that. That's good to see because that is all Obviously, people who live here hanging out in their local park. Okay. I just saw something big come out of that hole right there in the ground. What the heck is in there? If anyone knows what big things live in these holes, because it just came out. I saw, I can see it. It has to be some kind of crab. I hope it's not a spider, but it's something like that. I can see its legs. Creepy. There's a lot of people from the neighborhood hanging out. Done about two and a half miles walking so far. It's not real far, of course. We're back to the ice cream place. I move over to the sidewalk. I'm a little bit in the road. And you can see the water a little bit better. A lot of people seem to be out using. I mean, we're on the waterfront, right? So, of course, it's going to be the most popular place. It's got the coolest breezes and the best views. So people are gonna come out here, but it's still, it's a good number of people and dogs. Hello, hi. But not much in the way of beaches here. It's pretty much just water and trees and stuff all right we are right at the end of the battery i'm glad i checked it when i did because we're we're quite quite low 
and uh, I'm, I'm right around the corner. So now I'm just wrapping up evening. So as always, thanks for joining me. I hope you found this educational and interesting and it whets your appetite for future trips to Belize and abroad. I wanna go more places and get more things. This again, this was a business trip, so this is not planned content. This is not scheduled content. This is squeezing in what I can while I'm here, but I hope it was interesting and uh, as always, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Just go to the website and it's like Patreon. It comes directly to me and helps pay for potential future trips and cameras and the computers and the all the things I need to be able to make the show. If you would be so kind, share this on social media. Just take the link and pop it into Facebook or Instagram, wherever it is you spend your time online and tell someone you know about the show, spread the word, and I will see all of you from the airports and the lounges and the city of Guatemala and by late at night, Managua, Nicaragua tomorrow. And as always, if I'm lucky enough to actually get it done, there'll be, in some cases, for videos up on the screen, clicking on one of those tells the algorithm that you really love the show and that it could keep showing these to other people more and more often.